New 72 Radio, the voice, views, and visions of the collective. Good evening, everyone. This is Mary Berger, and welcome to Diva Talk. This is our first episode of Diva Talk, and we are going to be airing every other Thursday night at 7 p.m. So every other week, you can count on me broadcasting from Computer Diva headquarters here and talking to you about technology. So um, a little bit of uh, business here to, to get through. Um, if you are watching this, it means that you either saw the post on Facebook announcing this show, or you received an email from me. I sent an email out to my entire client list last night, letting them know about this show. And uh, so thank you if you're joining us. I, I really appreciate it. There are a couple of ways that you can join us. You can watch this live from your computer, your Windows computer, your Apple computer. You can watch from a, an iPad, an iPhone, or an Android device. The platform that we use here to broadcast this show is called Zoom. And Zoom has apps for all platforms. And all you simply need to do is download the app onto either your computer, um, Windows or Mac, your iPhone, iPad, or Android device and log in with a login and, and I don't think you need a password, I'm not sure, but anyway, um, when you go to join a show, you'll click on join a show and our show number is, oh and I can't believe I don't have it, oh here it is, 590-101-489. So that's how you would join our show live. We are also recording this, and the recording will be up oh, sometime in the next day or two on the New 72 Media YouTube page, and uh, maybe cross-posted on the Computer Diva YouTube page as well. So um, you, if, if for some reason you're busy on Thursday nights and you can't join us live, um, you can always listen to the recording on the YouTube pages a couple of days after the fact and I will always post when those recordings go up on YouTube so you'll know when you can go out and find them. Um, additionally, you can subscribe to either the New 72 Media YouTube page or the Computer Diva YouTube page, and you will get notifications when a new video is posted. So I, I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you find it a useful source of information for technology news, tips, um, and chat. So I, I would love if, if anybody would, would like to come in and chat with us. We have a couple of ways you can do that. There is a phone number that you can call if you have a question. And that phone number, there's actually two phone numbers. I'm going to give you both of them. Uh, so we have 408-638-0968 or 646-658. 8856. When you call either of those numbers, you will be asked for the meeting number, which again is 590-101-489. So um, feel free to call in. You can actually go live on the air with us. Or if you are joining through Zoom, the video platform, there's a chat function and you are welcome to post your questions in the chat room and uh, and I will answer those questions for you. You can be anonymous or you can identify who you are. It doesn't matter. Um, if you're shy, be anonymous. So that's perfectly okay. So 
<clears throat> with that business out of the way, um, I, I will get into tonight's show. So, so it, you know, a brand new show for us. And, um, and that ding you just heard was my email. I'm going to close it. I'm sorry. I should have closed that before the show started. So, um, brand new show live. And, uh, you know, as, as we go on this show in the next oh, couple of months, we will probably add different pieces to the show, different segments. We'll um, talk about various things. But what I wanted to start with tonight was maybe just a little bit of news that's going on in the technology arena. There's, there's a, a, a lot about to pop. Um, it is the beginning of June, and the beginning of June always means it is time for Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. And that has been going on for years, and it's held in San Francisco. Um, this year, it's being held at the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium. I think that's where the keynote might be. I'm not sure. And, um, and a, a lot of the conference will be held at the Moscone Center as well both in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco. This is Apple's biggest event of the year. This is when software developers, Apple software developers pay to come to this conference and find out about all the new technologies that Apple will be releasing in the fall, uh, throughout the summer and in, into the fall. Um, they kind of switch that up a little bit here and there. But, um, and they are actually able to get their hands on beta versions of the software and they are able to start writing integrations of their software into Apple's devices. So it's a huge deal. It sells out every year. Um, thousands of developers converge on San Francisco and, uh, and, and really just learn all things about Apple. Um, so what happens at the Worldwide Developer Conference? Um, the first thing that happens is they have their keynote speech. And that has typically been in the past when Steve Jobs got on stage and announced the new products. Well, we, we all know that Steve Jobs is no longer with us. He's passed on. So it has reverted to Tim Cook, who is now the head of the company. And so Tim gets up on stage and he will talk about, first he'll talk about um, what's happening in the company, um, you know, how many how many iPhones they've sold so far this year, how many iPads they've sold, how many versions of, or how many millions of people are using particular versions of the latest iOS or OS X. Um, they'll all pat each other on the back and say, we're doing a wonderful job. And then he will get into revealing details about upcoming versions of the software. So usually first up is ios and ios is the software that runs the apple devices the iphones and the ipads and um so he, he'll talk about that and uh so this year he will be talking about um ios 10. ios 10. um hard to believe we have ios 10 but uh so and it's always very secretive about what's going to be revealed. But of course, there's, there's uh, technology people out there who are always um, trying to dig into the secrets at Apple and based on, you know, what they've ordered from various parts manufacturers, they try and make a guess on, okay, what is the latest iPhone going to be like? And based on, you know, spies that I've got um, in various places, what's going to be included in the new version of the software. So, um, so this year, of course, there's rumors. We never know anything concrete until Tim Cook actually does his keynote speech. So the rumors going around for this year, and, and usually the rumors turn out to be true. So, um, so probably what's going to happen with iOS devices is that any device with what they call an AS or an ASX chip is probably going to be dropped from support. So what does that mean? That is going to include the iPhone 4S, will no longer be supported by Apple, which means that you're, you've gone as far as you probably can with the software. Um, doubtful that iOS 10 will work on it, maybe, maybe not, but Apple's not going to actually um, 
test their software on that software on that device anymore. The, the, it's an older chip. It's a little bit sluggish. Um, I have an iPhone. This is not a 4S. That is a that's a five. So the five is, is still supported. So, so basically what that means, okay, so iPhone 4S, the iPad 2 will drop out of support. Um, the first generation of the iPad mini and the fifth generation of the iPod touch and the iPad 3. So those will go into no support land. Um, so as of iOS 10. Um, so it, 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 it basically, you know, the, the, the lesson to learn here is, there's a couple of things to learn here. Number one, you, you want to keep your devices as up to date as possible. Um, when you get that, that little red dot on the um, settings screen that indicates that there's an update and you need to keep your, your device as up to date as possible. If you get more than two versions behind, you're gonna, gonna have a hard time updating your device. Um, I actually had a client today who he is, he has an iPhone, I'm trying to think of what it is. It, it is sold, it has iOS 6 on it. It might be an iPhone 4, either 4 or 4S. It's one of the two. Um, but it, iOS 6 is on it, and he's got hundreds of notes in it. He uses the note application to take very detailed notes on, on the business that he, he runs. So he recently bought a new iPhone 6S. He bought one of these here, which is what I have, the 6S. And so he, he set it up. It's a brand new number as well. So now he has two phones. It's a brand new number, and we set it up probably two or three weeks ago um, clean. We didn't recover a backup from the old phone, um, didn't do any of that stuff. So it's just a, a clean phone. Um, so now what we're going to be doing probably sometime in July is we are going to be taking that iPhone 4S, totally backing it up and, uh, and trying to get all of those notes onto his new iPhone. I'm kind of doubtful that we'll be able to just do an iCloud backup and take the iPhone 6 and set it back to factory defaults and then just say, hey, give me that backup that I just did on the other phone and put it on here. I don't know how, how viable it is to get data from iOS 6 onto OS X or iOS 9 um, on a brand new phone. If not, there's a lot of third-party software tools out there that will allow us to kind of migrate the data from one phone to another, so we might have to kind of pull the trigger and spend some some bucks on a piece of third-party software to do that. But that's okay if that's what it, it it takes to get all of his notes onto the new phone. Then that's what we're going to have to do. So that'll probably be a project for July. Um, so so the next thing. Um, you know, there's not going to be too many changes to the user interface this year. They did a huge change from iOS 6 to iOS 7. That's when they went from the older, clunkier looking software with the more traditional leather type um, user interface to the brighter, fresher colors. Um, everything on the screen was a little bit flatter. Um, and they've been just polishing that up ever since, and that's kind of what they're expected to do this time. So no major user interface changes. Um, here's an interesting thing. Um, the rumor is going around that they're, they are probably going to be releasing a software development kit. It's an SDK, Software Development Kit, that will allow third-party programs to integrate themselves in with Siri. And the cool thing about that is right now with Siri, um, you can interact with Siri and give her or him commands about what you want to do. Hey, Siri, call John Doe. Hey, Siri, send a text to um, Jane Doe. Hey, Siri, um, navigate me to wherever. <laughs> and as I'm saying, hey, Siri, my Siri is reacting here. So uh, sorry, Siri. So, um, so you can do that with all of the standard um, Apple apps, but you can't do that with third-party apps, which would be huge if you could do that. If you could say, hey, Siri, um, thought I closed that, hold on, 
there we go. Um, if you could say, hey Siri, um, could you could you open up Waze and navigate me to Jane Doe's house? Um, that would be awesome. That would really be awesome. Um, I use the Waze app instead of the um, navigation app on the iPhone because Waze is just so awesome. But if you can integrate Siri with that, that, that would really be cool. So that's the rumor on that. Um, of course, they're always doing improvements to Siri. Um, in my opinion, she still needs a lot of improvements. About half the time, she doesn't understand what I'm trying to tell her. And uh, she kind of becomes a little bit more of a hindrance than a help because I usually use her in the car when I, I you know, I have my iPhone hanging off the windshield and, uh, you know, I'll ask her to send somebody a text or I'll ask her to call somebody. Um, I really try not to, to get on the phone while I'm in the car, but sometimes I just have to. Um, and half the time she doesn't understand what I'm saying. So sh she needs some, either she needs some refinements or I need to learn how to speak to her. Um, one of the two. So anyway, probably some improvements to Siri. She'll learn how to do something new this time. Uh, let's see. Uh, th they're supposed to be doing a, a pretty major overhaul to Apple Music. And if, if you guys recall, last year at this time, they released Apple Music. It's their, um, their music streaming service. And it's a subscription-based service. And I signed up for it. And I, I use it pretty extensively. Um, and so was, apparently they're doing a big overhaul to it. I don't know what's wrong with the way it works now. Um, I don't have any issues with how it works. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what, what happens. Uh, and of course, improved photos app. Let me just say, Apple, stop improving the photos app. Either that or uh, I, I don't know. But all I can say is every year I turn around, put a new version of iOS on my phone and my iPad, and they totally change the way photos work. And I'm really getting tired of it. And my users are getting tired of it. My clients are getting tired of it. Um, so, you know, just do something concrete here. And, you know, when you make a major revision, stick with it for a few years. Um, apparently, some of the stuff there's a rumored to be doing is um, giving you the ability to tag photos and write descriptions on them and, and who knows what else. I, I don't get that involved with it, but all I want to do is take a photo on my iPhone. I want it to go up to iCloud and I want it to show up on my MacBook. And, uh, and that, that's really all I want to do. A lot of other people do a lot of other things. Um, it's kind of cumbersome right now to create folders and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and stuff of the like. Um, I was trying to think of the word. I, I anyway, I can't think of it. But uh, it, it is a little cumbersome right now. But Apple, decide what you want to do with it, and just do it, and leave it that way for a while. Um, oh, here's one that that you might find interesting: um, the ability to remove Apple apps. So you know, on your iPhone or your iPad, you've got these built-in apps. Like you've got um, you've got weather, you've, you've got um, your wallet, your FaceTime. Um, there's all sorts of built-in apps that a lot of people just don't use and you can't remove them from the iPhone. If you could remove them, you might save yourself a little bit of space. But uh, apparently in iOS 10, you'll have the ability to remove those. Right now, what people do is they'll drag them to one of the last screens or they'll create a folder and put all these apps that they don't use in it and put it on the last screen so that they're not in the way. So that would really be kind of handy. Um, let's see, improvements to iMessage. I'm not sure what they're gonna do there. Apparently there's a lot of things that you can do in messaging apps on the Android platform that you can't do on, on iOS. So I don't know, I, I text message people and all I do is you know I text a message and I send it out and they respond back. That's pretty much all I wanna do and it works just great for me. So. Um, looking forward to seeing what they're doing there. Um, release date for iOS 10 will be sometime in the fall. They always announce it at WWDC in June, and then it's released in the fall. They never give you a concrete date until sometime, maybe in September, they'll say, eh, oh, and by the way, it's usually when they announce their new iPhone, they'll say, oh, by the way, next week it'll be available. So usually figure sometime in October. That's usually about when it drops. Okay, so um, 
the, the next thing Tim Cook will talk about is OSX 10, 10.12. OSX is the operating system for the iMac, the MacBook Pros, the MacBooks, the MacBook Airs, um, and the Mac Pros, um, those nice tall cylinders that are heavy, heavy duty, um, usually for video editing. editing. Um, so anyway, OS X 10.12, don't know much about what they're going to release there. Um, maybe put Siri on it. That, that would really kind of make sense. Siri is on the iPhone, the iPad. It's on the, the Apple Watch. It's on the, um, the Apple TV. So it only makes sense to have it on your computer now. So that would really be kind of cool. And they may rename the operating system from OS X to Mac OS to kind of fall in with their naming conventions of everything else, iOS, Mac OS, um, Watch OS, and TV OS. So um, who knows? Um, and then of course he'll talk about the Watch OS I don't own an Apple Watch. I just can't see me spending $350 for a watch. And I know it does a whole lot of other things, but I don't wear a watch and I haven't worn a watch in years. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I need to read text messages on my wrist and I don't need to read email. I certainly don't need to answer the phone. And you know, it, it, I, I just don't need to do that. My, my iPhone has a bigger screen. It's always handy and it's always with me. So I don't, I don't, I don't need a watch. So um, let's see. Which, and, and then of course the Apple TV, which is, is probably going to go through some refreshes on the TV OS. I have an Apple TV around here somewhere that's hooked up to my TV up there, but I haven't used it in months. Um, I haven't turned on that TV in months. So um, I, I, I just, don't have the time for it. So, you know, if I had more time, I would really get into the Apple TV. Um, and maybe one of these days I will. But uh, I, I find that my life is so busy and so full of, of work and customers that I don't have time really to watch a whole lot of TV. When I do, I watch it on my iPad. So, um, in fact, if, if it were just me living in this house, I wouldn't have a TV at all. So, um, so that's the Worldwide Developer Conference news uh, that kicks off this coming Monday in San Francisco. There will be the keynote speech, and I always forget to put that on my calendar, and I'll bet you anything that my calendar is booked solid on Monday. Uh, the keynote may, may be on Tuesday, who knows, but uh, I'll have to look that up, and yeah, not going to happen. So they always record it. I'll listen to the recording later. And uh, in in my show two weeks from now, I'll give you a recap. So anyway, I've spent way too much time on this already. So that's kind of, of what's happening in the Apple arena. News from Microsoft. Oh my God. So Microsoft, what are you doing? So first of all, Microsoft, you have kept me so busy the past month, um, cleaning up after people who have um, woken up and all of a sudden found Windows 10 on their computer when they didn't give anybody permission. And truth be told, people did get warnings that this was going to happen. Um, Windows popped up on your screen and said, hey, we want to schedule Windows 10 install. But people traditionally don't read screens and Honestly speaking, as a technician, I tell my clients, and I try and train my clients to install all software updates onto your computer. If it's from Microsoft, install the update. If it wants you to install it, install the update. So as this really is an update from Microsoft, um, I've trained my clients really well, and they're installing the update. What they really didn't know was this is a major update. This was taking them from either Windows 7 or 8.1 over to Windows 10. And uh, so people, you know, they just click on OK. They don't really understand what they're reading. And but Microsoft has given everybody a lot of outs. I've done a lot of research on it the past week. And, um, you know, I, I, I just couldn't understand why I got so many calls from clients saying, wow, all of a sudden my computer has Windows 10. Why is that? I didn't authorize that. Well, you know, 
truth be told, you really did, but Microsoft kind of was devious with you. And they, they kind of made it appear like, oh, this might just be an update. Or a lot of people, there was an X in the upper right-hand corner of that screen, and they clicked on the X, and the software installed anyway. You actually had to um, reject the install before it would stop the installation. So um, shame on you, Microsoft, for being so aggressive in your rollout of Windows 10. Um, I don't think they're going to listen to me and change their tactics. But, uh, but anyway, I, I, I'm hoping that is coming down to an end. Um, I, I have a lot to do with my clients, and I want to do the fun stuff. I don't want to keep having to revert computers from Windows 10 back to Windows 8.1 or Windows 7. Although if, if you know, somebody calls me and says, hey, will you do that? I will do it. Um, but, you know, Microsoft, give me something more fun to do. So, um, so Windows 10 is free. And, and I think why they're making the big push right now is they, they want to get as many people on Windows 10 before they stop offering it for free which will be on July 29th. Windows 10 was released last year on July 29th, and uh, the free update is over on July 29th of this year. So who knows what's going to happen after that, but um, because nobody tells anybody anything, these software companies don't really tell you anything until they do something. But, uh, and I don't mean to sound sarcastic here, but you know, they, they, they really do. Um, so what will probably happen is the cost of Windows 10 Home Edition will be $120, and the Windows 10 Pro Edition will probably go for $200. So if you want to upgrade to Windows 10 before you have to pay for it, now's the time to do it. Um, I like Windows 10. I really, really like Windows 10. And I have nothing against Windows, Windows 10. It's a huge, huge improvement over Windows 8 um, and a, a, a huge improvement over Windows 8.1. Windows 8 was disaster, absolute disaster. Windows 8.1 was much better, but Windows 10, much, much better. They kind of took the, the nice elements of Windows 7 and kind of the nice elements of Windows 8.1, married them together, and voila, um, Windows 10. So um, I like it. I just don't like the fact that it is being forced onto your computer. So, um, so what's my rule of thumb here? So I'm going to tell you my rule of thumb is if you're on Windows 8.1, definitely go to Windows 10. Um, it, it will be a big improvement for you. If you are on Windows 7 and your computer is in the five, maybe six-year-old time frame, I would really hold off. Um, your computer probably won't last much longer, and you're, you're better off getting a brand new computer with a brand new operating system rather than trying to put a 2016, 2015, 16 operating system on a computer you bought in 2010. Um, the hardware is old enough where eh, you might have some issues. You might have some driver issues. So with all of that said, um, usually the issues that you have when you upgrade to Windows 10 is that um, you'll have to update a few drivers, and typically it's your printer driver, which is so super simple to update. Um, I simply just go to the manufacturer's website and download the latest driver for Windows 10, install it, and boom, your printer's working. So, um, so yeah, so, so that's kind of you know, what you need to think about. If you want Windows 10 and your computer will, will support it, definitely do it before July 29th, before they start making you pay for it. So what's going to happen when they start making you pay for Windows 10? Well, then they're going to come out with the Windows 10 anniversary edition, because we're all going to be celebrating the fact that Windows 10 is now a year old. So we're going to have this big anniversary edition. Um, have no idea how it's going to be pushed out there. Um, or how aggressive Microsoft is going to be to get all of their Windows 10 clients onto the new anniversary edition. Don't know yet, and we won't know until it actually happens. Um, I don't have any secret sauce for that, so um, we'll, we'll just see what happens. Um, it will most likely be free to those who are already on Windows 10, so that's an incentive to get up to Windows 10. Um, I, I, I do caution you, though, if you own a business, 
you want to make sure that all the software you use is compatible with Windows 10 before you pull the trigger. I do have some clients um, who are running software that just will not run on Windows 10. So we, we have put measures in place to ensure that their computers will not be updated. And uh, th there's a piece of software out there called the GWX Control Panel. You can Google it. And uh, in fact, I will Google it now and tell you what website is legitimate for you to download that from. GWX Control Panel. That is from ultimateoutsider.com. So that's the website you want to go to to download the GWX Control Panel. When you download it and install it, there will be a menu. There are several buttons that you will push to stop Windows 10 from updating and to delete the Windows 10 update folders and to delete the Windows 10 cached files. It's okay to do all of that. Um, so feel free to do that. So that's the GWX control panel. I've, I've ran that on dozens of computers now so far and works like a charm. Never had a problem with it. Um, so Windows 10 Anniversary Edition July 29th will be the drop date on that and uh, really don't know that much else about it. So with that said, um, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to pose them in the, um, the Zoom webinar chat panel. Um, you will see it on your screen. There's probably a button linking you to it. Um, so yeah, we've got some people in there, so don't be shy. Ask questions if, if you want to. So I, you know, I'm going to get into the meat of what I really want to talk about. Um, so that, that was all news. So we're done with that. So I was actually, I was listening to a podcast yesterday and there, there are several technology podcasts that I listen to. This one happened to be a podcast geared towards tech people, tech people like me, people who own their own technology-based business. And in there, they were talking about a piece of software that would help you streamline your workflows in your company. And this could be applied to any type of company. I, I can think of several clients I have who could really use this. And I'm, I'm actually going to do some screen sharing with you and kind of show you how this works. But they really had an ingenious idea about this. So the piece of software is called, and I'm going to ungrab it from here. And I'm going to minimize it down here. Anyway, the, the and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. But the, the piece of software is actually called Process Street. Process.st is the website. And it basically is, it's an awesome, awesome piece of software. Let me see if I'm just going to go up to their website here. I found a really good description of it, and now I think I lost it. But anyway, um, basically it's a piece of software that allows you to create checklists, um, it, it allows you to document various processes and procedures that you use to run your business. So, for instance, in my business, I've got procedures on how to um, onboard a new customer. So, uh, you know, I get a new customer. There's various things that have to be done in my business in order to get this customer um, into my systems. So I have a ticket tracking system called Repair Shopper. And so the customer has to go in there first. Um, before I can do any work for a customer, it has to go in there. So I have to create a customer account in my repair shopper software. I have to, because um, usually what happens, a, a new customer will call me and they'll say, hey, you were recommended to me by so-and-so. Can you fix my printer issue? Can you set up my new computer? Can you set up a backup for me? Or I have a virus, can you help me out with that? So. I go into Repair Shopper and I have to create a new customer record. So that entails putting in the customer's name, address, phone number, email address. And it creates that customer record. Once I have that established, I can go in and create a what I call a ticket for the customer. It's basically a work order. And the ticket will include all the details of the issue. And once the ticket is established and I'm actually performing the work, I can go into that ticket and I can write all sorts of detailed notes and I can then communicate back and forth with the customers. So 
Um, maybe I'm going to send an email to the customer saying, hey, when I show up for the appointment, if you could have these three things handy and ready for me, that would be awesome. Um, they could write me back and all of that communication goes into the details of the ticket, which is awesome. So I have full documentation of, of every conversation I have with that customer. Um, I can track the time that I spent on the job. It's how I do my billing. So I go out on a job and I spend two hours and I go to the time tracker and I say, okay, my labor hours were two and this is my um, amount per hour that I charge. And so go ahead and put labor on there. If I purchased a part, if I purchased um, a thumb drive, I don't have one laying around here, but if I purchase a part, I can say, I can go into the time tracker and I can say, okay, I purchased this thumb drive, it's $19.99, and I can put that in the time tracking, and once I'm done with the job, I can then click on make invoice, and it takes all the labor and parts that I've um, used on that job, and it pulls it all together and puts it on an invoice, which I can then email to the client or if they pay me right away, I can just mark it as paid. I can tell it how it paid, check credit card cash, whatever. And, uh, and then send an email to the client with that paid invoice for their records. It's really, really awesome. Um, so, the, you know, a lot of processes and procedures of the way I like to have things done in this software and, uh, my, my, um, my, my clerical help, um, my, my wonderful clerical help, um, Mary, she um, does a lot of that stuff for me, especially the processing of the invoices. So um, we have processes and procedures for her to follow. So the, um, so, the, so this process street software is awesome because you can document all of that and you could say, okay, say I'm bringing a new clerical person on board or an assistant or maybe a, even another tech, I can go into this software and I, I can say, okay, this is the client onboarding procedure. Um, I would like you to go through this procedure, read everything, but here's the amazing part that I heard on this podcast yesterday and I'm gonna show this to you in a minute. Um, what they said was you can actually go in and record a video use um, you can use Skype you can use the software platform that we're using for this radio show you can use zoom and you can actually go in and you can record a video and do screen sharing so I can bring up the screen of my repair shopper and I can say okay this is how we add a new client and this is how we fill out the fields, and this is what we answer for this field, and this is what we answer for that field, and this is how we categorize the client. And you can embed that video into the procedure. So um, I am going to, I am going to share my screen, process street, and I'm gonna say share. And where is the screen? Process Street. So I'm hoping you all can see this. Um, if you guys can't, Kelly, if you can't see the screen, um, maybe send me a little message in Facebook messaging and let me know um, cause I really have no way of knowing whether or not we can all see this. So I'm just going to pull up my messenger here in case she messages me. Um, so anyway, so this is the main screen of, um, process rate. So I've kind of created this little procedure here. And, um, so I've called it client onboarding and I've got really three procedures over here on the left hand side, create new client and repair shopper install DivaCare and process the client's payment. So I'm gonna go over the first part here with you. So I'm going to edit this template and you can see that for create a new client and repair shopper, um, so the three steps are, we're going to add a new client record, we're going to create a ticket and we're going to set up an appointment. So, um, so they've got three things that they have to do here. And the cool thing about this is that maybe on this step here, 
I want to include a screenshot of the actual client record. So in order to do that, I can just simply go over here to the media button and I say, I want to embed an image here. And I'm going to go here to upload image. And I'm going to, let's see if I could find it here. I created it. Here it is, new customer. I'm going to open this. So now I've got my new customer screen for them to look at while they're doing this procedure. Um, the other thing that I can do is now I can embed my video. So I can go over here to media and I can say, I want to embed a video into this process so that my new employee can actually watch the video of how to create a customer. So I'm going to go over to my YouTube page and I'm just gonna grab a video. And I'm going to put the link in here for this video. And now, as they're looking at these steps, they can actually watch the video of how to go through those screens. So that is so awesome. I, I, I can't believe how awesome it is. When I heard about this on the podcast, I thought, oh my God, I need to do that with my processes and procedures. I've got all the technology in place to make the videos. So, um, so it's really, really cool. Um, so, so then um, we've got, um, so then we've, we've got um, install DivaCare. Um, so we've got a couple of, of steps in, in that. So we've just put our little checklist here. And then the last part of onboarding a new client is to process their payment. So, um, and of course I can embed screenshots, videos, um, pictures, whatever. Um, it, and it's pretty awesome. So then I'll go up here and I'll save my changes. And yes, I'm going to save. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to run this checklist. So I am now Jane Doe. I've been hired by Computer Diva to, to do a little bit of clerical work. And I'm going to run this checklist and I'm going to give it a name. Um, and I'm just going to leave the default there. Um, it has my name and the time. And I'm going to say, but you, you could change that to whatever the new client name is. Um, Jane Doe onboarding. Um, and you could put the date in there, 6-9-2016. And you could say, okay, let's run this checklist. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, create new client and repair shopper. So now it comes up with add a client record. Okay, so I've got this checklist. I'm going to go up to my repair shopper software and I'm going to add the client record. Um, if I'm unsure of how to do that, I can watch this little video. Hey everyone, Mary Berger here with Computer Diva, and today I want to talk. There we go. Um, so once you're done adding the client record, you mark it off. Okay, so now I need to create a ticket for this client. So I can, you know, if I wanted to, I can embed another video here. I can do a screenshot. Okay, I've created the ticket. I'm done with that. Okay, so the next thing is now that I've got the ticket, I click on the create appointment button and I create my appointment. Boom, it's done. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's really awesome. It's, it's a great way to... Um, to make sure you don't miss any steps, it's a great way to um, kind of foster accountability into your employees or even yourself. Um, I am not the best with remembering everything that I have to do with every single task that I've got going on during the day. So um, these types of checklists are pretty awesome. So um, now I am done with this and um, Ooh, I suppose I have to check these. I've got each one checked in each one of those. Boom, 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 boom. There is a place over here to save. I think it's hiding behind this little window. Uh, maybe it self saves. I haven't really used this extensively. So I'm going to click my little home here. So now we've got this, Jane Doe onboarding, 6-9-2016, and the progress bar um, shows that this particular process is fully complete. Um, 
this is one I did a little bit earlier today and I haven't completed it yet. So it's a great visual to see what is left on, on your, your staff's plates. Um, so the website for this is process.st and, uh, and you might want to want to know what does this cost? Well, for everything that I did here, it's completely free. It's free for life. If I want to get into fancier features with multiple users, um, then you can get a, a, a business account. I think it's like $15 a month. I mean, super, super cheap. So, and, and that will give you a, a more advanced features. Um, but anyway, I thought this was awesome and I, I wanted to, to share this with you guys on this show. Um, so that is Process Street. So I am going to stop the share of this screen and we are going to go back here to our little screen. And uh, if you know me when I've done various um, shows, maybe webinars and stuff, um, you always know my dog is whining in the background and uh, she's whining now. And I'm, I'm just gonna go open the door, so bear with me here. Okay. All right. So, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> but for a minute there, you got to see the, the, the other side of my office over here. So, let me get this back in. Um, <clears throat> so, in, in our remaining time, you know, if anybody has any questions for me, feel free to raise your hands and, um, and I'll answer any questions you might have. Um, but the, the, one of the things I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, people ask me all the time, um, especially Windows folks, um, what can they do to prevent their computers from getting a virus? Um, and that there's some pretty nasty viruses going around right now. There are, um, there, there's a lot of different variants of the ransomware virus going around. And there's a lot of scareware going around. And, and what do I mean by scareware? Um, scareware typically originates on a website. Um, you go to a website and all of a sudden a window pops up. And I talked about this um, recently. And so, so the, the window starts, it starts flashing and beeping and then a voice will come on and say, you know, if, if you don't call this number within five minutes, your credit card information will be stolen. Um, you know, sensitive data will be stolen from your computer and uh, you'll be in a heap of trouble. So um, it's scare work. You go to a website, you click on an ad, a lot of it comes in that way, and the ad is actually infected and that's where the pop-up comes from. Um, so what I tell people is if they want to prevent this from happening, the, the best way is to make sure that your computer is kept up to date with operating system updates, um, third-party software updates such, such as Java, um, Adobe Reader, Adobe Flash, Adobe Air, if you have any of those on your system. If you opt to have those on your system, they're optional. Um, but if you do, do opt to have those on your system, you want to keep those up to date, um, in, including um, oh, all, all the little utilities you might have. You might have like a, a, a WinZip program. You might have some sort of PDF creator program. You might have, you know, something to edit videos. Um, there's a lot of little freeware utilities out there that you can put on your computer to do various functions. You want to keep all of those up to date as well. Um, the, the people who create the viruses, it's all organized crime from Eastern Europe. I shouldn't say all, but most. Um, and they, they prey on older versions of software with software bugs or holes in them, security holes. And they figured that out and they found a way to worm their way in through these holes and uh, pop up those windows to scare you and put viruses on your computer and to, to hold your computer for ransom if you don't give them, you know, five gazillion dollars. So keep your system up to date. So I spend a lot of time, um, in my, my business model, it's a break fix business model. Your computer breaks, I fix it. Um, it is... It, it, it's, it's very challenging for me to, um, 
to manage all the incoming requests and to set up the appointments in a way where, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing minimal driving um, back and forth between various customers homes or offices, and it, it becomes a challenge. Um, I operated in Vancouver, Washington, and um, I do a lot of work in the Portland, Oregon area, which um, traffic-wise can be a challenge at various times of the day. So um, I, I'm trying to um, get my business to go from a break-fix kind of business model to more of a managed services model. And I've come out with a really good product that is kind of a win-win for me and my customers. And um, it's, it's I'm, I'm calling it Diva Care. And Diva Care is a small piece of software that will go on your Windows computers. Um, I don't have anything for Mac yet because Macs don't need a whole lot of care. Um, but they do need a little bit of managing here and there, but for the most part it's Windows. So we put this little piece of software on your computer and it manages all of your Microsoft updates. It manages all of your third-party software updates. It, um, it will actually audit your computer every week and go through and see all the software on your system and compare the version against what the latest version is and it will come back and say, okay, we need this version installed. Let's pop it on that computer, let's install it. Um, we provide you with the antivirus software, Kaspersky Internet Security. We provide you with that for your monthly fee and we provide you with malware scanning. So every week we're scanning your system for viruses, we're scanning your system for malware and cleaning it up. We are running defrags on your hard drive. Um, various system alerts will come to me in the form of emails, so I might get a system alert. In fact, I've got a laptop sitting here next to me. It's uh, my, my test laptop, and I get emails on a daily basis from DivaCare saying there's a bad block on the hard drive of that laptop. Um, so how cool would it be if you, if, if you had a, a, a working relationship with someone like me who had a product like DivaCare and I called you and said, hey, you've got a bad block on your hard drive, we might want to deal with this and either fix it or maybe replace that hard drive, you might have a hardware failure coming up. Um, how cool would it be to be able to be proactive about your computer maintenance rather than oh my God, you, you try and boot up your laptop one day and, and you, you get that dreaded message that says there's no boot device detected, which means your hard drive has died. Um, and and they, they die quite often. Um, I replace a lot of hard drives. So it, it's just really nice to be able to manage that proactively, proactively rather than reactively. Um, I haven't officially launched DivaCare yet, DivaCare yet, but I've got a lot of computers running on it. I think right now I might have about 35 computers running on it. Um, it is a small monthly fee of $33 a month. Um, if you want to check out DivaCare, if you're interested in maybe getting that on your computer, for the month of June, I'm selling it for $29 a month. And that is that price is good for the life of the computer. Um, so feel free to contact me, mary at computerdiva.biz, if you're interested, and we'll get you up and running on it. And, uh, you know, I've got several computers in there. They've been running in there for a while, and it's amazing. It's amazing how well I can maintain and manage your computer um, without having to visit you and do a break fix instead of manage care. So, um, so yeah, I'm trying really to kind of move my business more into managed care and more into remote work. Um, I'm spending a lot of time on the road and it, it means that it's time not spent with my clients. Um, the challenge I have with the model I have is that I set up a full day of appointments and I'm driving from one appointment to another, so I will not answer my phone while I'm in an appointment with a client because that is rude to the client. They're paying me an hourly fee to concentrate on their care and they deserve my full attention that hour. So I won't answer my phone while I'm in an appointment. Then I'm usually in the car going to my next appointment. I really don't like to talk on the phone while I'm in the car. I will if I have to, but I really don't like it because I, you know, it really is distracting. And you know, I'll wear a headset if I have to, but it really is distracting. So I try really hard not to do that. Um, so where does that leave me? That leaves me at the end of the day when I get back to my office in the evening, um, returning all the phone calls that I got that day, um, 
returning emails. I try really hard to get to my emails throughout the day because it's so much easier for me to respond via email. Um, so if, if, if you're out there and you're listening and you're a client of mine, I, I'm going to say you can get a really fast response from me. If, if you need me to send an email to helpdesk, H-E-L-P-D-E-S-K, at computerdiva.biz, that puts your request right into my repair shopper program. I get a notification, my, my phone does a little chime, and uh, it's non-intrusive. I can go in, I can look at it, I can see your request, I can shoot you off an email, all the details are recorded on your client record, and uh, it, it's, it's a huge time saver for me. So, um, so if anybody needs help from me, helpdesk at computerdiva.biz. So with that said, um, I think I've talked enough, and um, I, I don't see that anybody has any questions. We've got a, a slew of, of viewers and listeners in our chat room here, but uh, everybody's being shy, so that's okay. Um, so my, my goal is to give you some education and maybe a few little pieces of information that you might find useful um, in your computing life over the next few weeks. And uh, so feel free to join me in two weeks where we will do this again. And uh, I'll have results from the WWDC, maybe some more information on Windows 10 Anniversary Edition. Um, I will have a topic that I will want to talk to you about. And of course, if you want to ans ask a question, I am always available to answer your questions. So I look forward to, to doing this again with you in two weeks. Um, probably sometime tomorrow or Saturday. Um, the full recording of this show will be up on the New, New 72 Media Web um, YouTube page and, uh, and, and possibly on the Computer Diva YouTube page. So um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for listening, for watching, um, for your support of me. And I, I really appreciate that. And um, I, I appreciate and I cherish your support. So thank you so much for listening in and I will see you all again in two weeks. Bye.